Let's take a little time and talk about the shocks that come in the low C LMT. The shocks that come on the low C LMT are long travel units that are similar in design to the ones that are used on the TLR 22 series of vehicles. The shocks are really good out of the box. They do a good job of controlling the suspension, but I'm going to show you how to make them better. Very small E-clips in the center of the shock shaft keep the shock piston in place on the low C LMT. Now, these little E-clips, sometimes they'll look like they're fully seated in the shock shaft when they're not. And some people online have complained about the pistons coming off the shock shaft, the shock shaft pulling out of the shock, and, you know, that's really no reason to run down to your local hobby shop and replace the shocks. It's merely because at the factory, somebody just didn't uh, assemble them correctly. Those Eclipse weren't fully seated. So if you are concerned about that, it wouldn't hurt to take the shock apart. Take needle nose pair of pliers and uh, use them to press on the Eclipse and make sure they're fully seated in the shock shaft, both on top of the piston and below. Now I've run the pre-production truck. I ran a bunch of trucks during the product video. I have a bunch of personal trucks, all with these shocks on them, and I've never had a shock shaft pull out of the shock ever. Another area that I see some concern online is with the rod ends on the shock shafts. Uh, some people will say that they just went over a one foot jump and the rod end pulled off and then they're out there looking for new shocks for their truck. Well, depending on what you're doing, it's not really necessary. All you have to do is check to make sure they're not stripped from the factory. Now, I've found that on quite a few trucks that uh, the rod ends were installed incorrectly where they were bottomed out and whoever was assembling just kept going and ended up stripping out the hole. So of course it's going to pull out. Um, if you're concerned about that, you can pull the shocks off your truck, get them to the point where I have it here, grab a pair of pliers, hold on to the shock shaft. Now normally this is where I say don't mar the shock shaft, but this part of the shock shaft doesn't enter into the body, so it doesn't really matter. But hold on with a pair of pliers and give the shock, the rod end, a little bit of a twist. Now these are nice and tight, they're not stripped, they're good to go. But if it does spin when it's fully bottomed out, then you know it's stripped and you could replace them. The package is $20 for a bunch of shock pieces uh, that you can just go ahead and replace that rod end on the shock and you'll be good to go. Now, of course, if you're gonna do freestyle runs every single time you go out and you're doing some crazy stuff like adding heavy aluminum axles and so on, eh, then you might wanna look into some limiting straps. The shocks on the Losi LMT come with these little silicone bump stops to kind of soften the blow when the shocks are fully compressed. Now, some of you might be thinking, hey, you know what, I don't care about that. I can go ahead and pull those off and gain a little more shock travel. Well, you might want to think twice about that because the piston actually bottoms out in the shock body before the rod end touches the bottom of the shock. And therefore, these bump stops really don't do anything. As you can see, there's not much of a difference there is there. So it's best just to leave those bump stops in place so that the piston doesn't bottom out in the shock body and you don't damage the piston. One of the easiest ways to get the most performance out of the shock on the low CLMT is to simply replace the stock O-ring with an O-ring from TLR for 3.5 millimeter shafts. The stock O-ring puts a lot of pressure on the shock shaft and that causes stiction and that slows the shock shaft down uh, and it really affects the movement of that shock. By simply changing over to a TLR O-ring, you're gonna improve the performance so much on the shock that you might even have to bump up from 25 weight to 30 weight because that's how much smoother the shock will be. Uh, one thing you could do too to improve performance even more after you change over to the TLR shock uh, O-rings is to put a little bit of green slime which lubricates them, uh, lets them seat properly and reduces the stiction on the shock shaft even more. Another way to improve the performance of your low C LMT is to use shock spacers underneath the piston of the shock shaft. Uh, what this does is limit down travel. Now this is not related to a limit strap. This is a completely different story. This just limits down travel. Uh, it doesn't keep the rod end from pulling off or anything like that like a shock uh, uh, limiter does. Um, but this can be used to fine tune the truck so that you have less down travel, which can affect how the truck accelerates, how the truck stops, turns, and so on. Um, this is kind of a extreme example uh, of a length of a, a spacer, uh, but that's all I have. But uh, you can get different ones from TLR, Team Associated, and so on that have various lengths. Uh, and you can fine tune the down travel of the shock shaft by just putting a little spacer underneath the piston.
The Losi LMT comes with 1.1 pound springs in the front and 1.6 pound springs in the rear. Now that's a pretty good setup if you're going to go ahead and run a 3 as lipo that is in the rear and a little bit heavy. Um, but if you're going to run a 2S pack, then that 1.6 pound spring in the rear is going to be a little overkill for that uh, 2S lipo. So if you're going to run 2S lipos like I do, uh, you can switch the rear shocks to a 1.1 pound spring and have them all the way around for improved performance. Don't forget. The more weight you have in the truck, the stiffer the spring you need. The less weight you have in the truck, the lighter the spring. So if you're going to add, uh, let's say, uh, you know, a four cell pack instead of the three cell, then you have to bump up to the next rate on the spring chart to be able to handle the extra weight that you added of that 4S pack. A great thing about the low C shocks is that you can build them one of two ways, a bladder style or a motion style. They come from the factory bladder style, which is this uh, little thing here. This is a bladder that goes underneath the shock cap. And when the shock shaft enters the shock itself, it gives the oil somewhere to go. Uh, and it makes the shock really smooth. Now, some people might not like a bladder style shock and want to build it emulsion style. So if you do that, you'll have to switch over to an O-ring. The bladder itself, not only does it give oil somewhere to go in the shock cap, but it also seals the shock cap on the shock body. If you decide to go emulsion style, then it's best to get an O-ring from the TLR O-ring kit uh, and put that underneath the shock cap. That'll seal it, and that'll allow you to build the shock emulsion style. Modification I like to make to the Losi LMT shock is to add a hole on the side of the shock cap for bleeding the shock. It gives the air an extra oil somewhere to go and makes your life a little bit easier. You can do it with the way they are from the factory, but I just find it to be a little more difficult and time consuming. So I just add a small hole on the side of the shock cap to make that a uh, much easier situation. Now I just use a small drill bit to drill a hole in the side and I make sure the threads are nice and clean on the inside before I put it in place. Uh, one word of caution though, do not use a center punch to do this uh, because you will dent the shock cap and ruin it. In the end, if you do decide to change your shocks on the low C LMT, keep two things in mind. Remember that you have to look at spring rate and damping. Now, if you're using the stock uh, axle mounted set up on the truck, remember that there's no leverage acting on that shock. So a super light spring is necessary in order for it to work properly. A lot of shocks that are out there, I would say pretty much all of them, are designed to be used on a vehicle that has a independent suspension system or a trailing arm, which there is leverage acting on that shock. So the shock spring that's most likely on the shock you're looking at is going to be way too stiff for an axle mounted shock setup. So remember that when you're buying aftermarket shocks, look at the spring rate and make sure that that spring rate is close to the one used on the stock truck. Damping, that's a little bit of a different story. Damping, you can make adjustments by changing out the shock oil to a lighter shock oil, but the problem is, you know, you can only go so far with that. So if you get to a point where you're at like 10 weight oil, still a little bit too thick, uh, you could take the piston out and drill it to match the shocks of the LMT and then start again at 25 weight.